Brother Chosen Okonrende. Brother Chosen has been ministering since the age of 17 and has been used by the Lord to touch many lives. He's traveled the globe proclaiming the truth of Christ through music and the preaching of the word. With his mature understanding of the word of God and his youthful spirit, Brother Chosen is able to cut across all ages. He pastors the first service at his local church, Pavilion of Redemption, and leads the youth arm of the church. He's married to Grace Okunrende, and they're blessed with two children. Please join us as we welcome Minister Chosen Okunrende. All righty. Hey, uh, whoever's voice that was, I might recruit you to Houston, so anytime I'm about to go up, you'll introduce me all the time. I thank God for being here. I thank God for safe journeys. I thank God for answering my prayers that uh, my flight wasn't delayed too long. So yeah, good job guys, good job. Keep it up, keep it up. So we're gonna get into uh, the word and um, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for life. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for bringing us here safely. Thank you for those who are tuned in online. Thank you that uh, we have the technology to even tune in. Help us, Lord, to be focused as your word is coming forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's, uh, I, I, I typically like to do this, and um, it's just to warm people's people up and to thank the Lord. Let's give a one clap for the Father. Mm -hmm. that, that, you guys probably did the best out of all the churches I've been to, all right? Let's try it again. One clap for the Father. Almost there. One clap for the Father. Said what? Let him who has what? An ear. Let him hear. All right? So we all have ears. By the grace of God, if you can hear, um, this message is for you. If you can understand this message, this message is for you. So I'm going to be getting the children to participate a lot, and the parents also need to also participate and hopefully listen in. So one of the key texts that I was given is Acts 13, uh, verse uh, 36. It says, But David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid amongst his father's and underwent decay. Emphasis on David served the purpose of God in his own generation. So what was the purpose of God? What was the purpose of God for David in his own generation? If you just look up a little bit in the scriptures, some verses before, verse, let's look at verse uh, 22. It says, after he had removed him, talking about uh, um, Saul. This is, Pete, this is Paul giving a sermon in the synagogue um, on the Sabbath day. And he's talking about, he's just giving a whole history of, I guess, Israel. He spoke about the people wanted a king, God gave them Saul. Then verse 22, Acts 13, 22 says, after he had removed him, Saul, he raised up David to be their king. I told you. God found David said, this is the guy. What about this guy? He's going to do what? My will. A lot of noise is made about the will of God and this and the will of God and that. It's really not that complicated. A man of God said, uh, God is, he, he sees God like a boss. And when you go to work, you do the regular thing. If there's something different that the boss wants from you, how would you know? He's going to tell you. The boss will let you know. The boss will go out of his way to let you know. But what you got to do is at least show up at work. Be in the building. Be doing what you ought to be doing. What's already written for you to do when you got the job. Be doing that. If there's something new, the boss going to let you know. So what is the standard of God for us? What is the thing that God already expects us to be doing, especially children? Because today is your day, right? So what is the will of God for children? Let's look at Ephesians. Ephesians 6. Yeah, we're going to get into it, all right? 
Ephesians 6, children, listen up. The scripture says, Ephesians 6, 1, children, can y'all hear me? Children. I, I heard like two kids respond. Children. Yes, good. We're in Nigeria, you say yes, uncle. Nah. <laughs> children, this is what God wants from you, all right? It says, obey your parents. Not just any type of parent. Obey your parents in the Lord. Obey your parents what? In the Lord. Let's say it. Obey your parents in the Lord. Hopefully your parents are in the Lord. Sometimes your parents be stepping out. And tell them I'm not here. Your parents are not in the Lord right there. Obey your parents what? In the Lord. Mommy and daddy are going to set you a good example. And you ought to obey what mommy and daddy tell you to do. Just like the, just like the, um, what was that, the talk show. The parents will guide the children like, okay, that's too much time on the tablet. Your parents tell you that because mommy and daddy love you. Not because they hate you, not because they don't want you to have fun, but they want to make sure that you are doing what you need to do. And sometimes too much screen time is not good. Even that talk show is for parents too, right? It's for everybody. Because, you know, the kids are on Snapchat and, uh, 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 what is it, Snapchat and uh, TikTok. What are the parents on? Facebook. And what's the other one? This, this is what my mama called it. What's up? I said, Mom, why you keep greeting me, Ma? I mean, you want me to dap you up? No, I'm talking about what's up. What's app? That's what it's called. I ain't no what's up. That's a greeting. Parents sit on WhatsApp. My pops is over there trying to be cool. You know, my pops is old school. He's trying to be cool, you know. He wants to go get some friends on Facebook. He just started adding everybody. He said, then he's scrolling on his Facebook, like, hey, ah, this is what my friends are doing. <laughs> Those are not your friends, Pops. Those are just people you added. <laughs> we got to be careful on social media. So because mommy and daddy love you, sometimes they might tell you, hey, turn off that iPad. You know, my wife, this is my iPad, all right? My wife has an iPad. But no, my wife's iPad is my daughter's iPad now. She said, Mama, get my iPad. Wait, your iPad? Your three? You know, sometimes I, I wonder, what did we do as children at church? How to keep us quiet? This is how they kept us quiet. Who's? That was it. Y'all children are enjoying it. You don't get this anymore? No? Nah, that's what you get. Who's? Obey your parents who are in the Lord. Obey your parents in the Lord. When mommy and daddy tell you to do things, it's because they love you. Look at verse 2. It says, honor your father and mother. Do you guys know, can you guys tell me, how do you honor mommy and daddy? Anybody, just yell it out. How do you honor mommy and daddy? Y'all better clap for yourselves, man. Wow. Obeying them. This is how you honor mommy and daddy. It's really easy to please African parents, just to let you children know. Not when it comes to your grades, though, okay? Not when it comes to your grades, because every African parent somehow topped the class. You know I topped my class. Wait, how many of y'all were in the class? Because everybody said they topped the class. Somebody got to be at the bottom now. But for y'all to please your parents, hey, it's real simple. As you said, what are you supposed to do? Obey them. You know what's even better than obeying them? Doing what they like before they tell you. Because for you to obey mommy and daddy, mo look at mommy and daddy like, yes, tell this child, I've been telling them. Uh -uh, I've been warning them. But if, for you to obey mommy and daddy, they have to tell you something, right? then you obey. You can't obey something you don't know about. But what mommy and daddy have already told you, if you do it before they even tell you, oh my goodness, 
you become the number one child if there is one. You become their favorite because you're doing it even before they say it. That is what pleases mommy and daddy. And the Bible tells us, because remember, we want to do God's will, right? We want to live a purposeful life. The Bible's telling us, honor your father and mother. And you guys are so smart. You already know how to honor uh, mommy and daddy. The way you honor mommy and daddy is by doing what? Obeying them. This is the first commandment with a promise. The Bible says when you honor father and mother, there's a promise that's attached to this obeying your parents, honoring father and mother. What's the promise? Verse 3 says, so it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Obeying mommy and daddy will make sure that it's well with you, not just that you get to live long on the earth. So listen, when I was younger and, uh, you know, I wanted some things from my parents. For some reason, a lot of African parents, they just don't like buying stuff. You know, they're not used to just buying. You know what I mean? You go to the store, mommy, look, put your hand out. Like, what? I'm just, we, I'm just saying, look, ma, can you? They don't like to buy things. Because maybe when they were growing up, their parents didn't always buy things like that for them. So just buying, buying is not just, they're not used to that. So I wanted my dad to buy me a PlayStation. But I knew I couldn't just go to my dad and say, Dad, could I get a play? Play what? Don't you already have a PlayStation in the house? I'm going to play in a station in the house. Now you want a PlayStation. No. So I couldn't just do that. So what did I have to do? I had to honor my parents, right? And the way we honor them is by what? Obeying them. But what's even better is when we obey before they say something, right? So guess what I started doing? I started doing things before mommy and daddy told me. So I washed the car. No, 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 I didn't wash the car. I cleaned the inside of the car. I was too young to wash. I cleaned the inside of the car. I vacuumed the house. I washed the dishes. Here goes my dad. Wow, Joseph is becoming a man. I mean, uh, wow, okay. I kept doing that. By the time I came to my dad and said, Dad, can I get a PlayStation? Easy, yes. Easy. It was because my dad was pleased with me, right? Whatever I ask him, he's more than likely going to do. You know what God said about Jesus? This is my beloved son in whom I'm what? Well pleased. Pretty much everything Jesus asked the father, the father did. Because Jesus is always going to ask in accordance with the will of the father. And the will of the father is for us to be happy to, to, to rejoice, not with things that are gonna harm us, but with things that are gonna help us. So when I asked my dad for a PlayStation, he said yes, because I was already pleasing him. So the scripture says that it will be well with you. It was very well with me when I got my PlayStation. And the Bible also says what? That you may live long on the earth. So we listen to mommy and daddy, we obey them, and we'll be able to live long on the earth. How, how is that possible? Because as little children, we don't know what is dangerous. You know, sometimes we do dangerous things, right? Like my little kids, they like to run around the house. They don't think it's dangerous until they hurt themselves. And daddy's like, ah, what happened? Oh, I was running, but daddy said, stop running. When you obey your parents, you'll be able to live long on this earth. Mommy and daddy are there to protect you, to help you. My son wanted to start riding bikes. All right, cool. We went on a bike ride. He fell down. My wife being a nurse that she is, Amazon, you know, Amazon is the best and the worst place, especially for women, because somehow there's always a package of Amazon showing up at the door every day. She bought knee pad, elbow pad, helmet, why? Because she's trying to keep him safe, right? So if he obeys mommy and daddy, and he puts on that knee pad, the elbow pad, the helmet, he can be safe, and by God's grace, he may live long on this earth. 
So we listened to mommy and daddy so they could go well with us, so that we could live long on this earth. Now, verse 4, this is Ephesians 6, 4. It says, fathers. It doesn't talk to the mothers now. Because, you know, mothers already have a soft spot. They gave birth to the child. They just have a the, the little bit more tender than fathers. So the Bible says, hey, you daddies. Do not provoke your children to anger. That, that's almost a default setting, I think, of an African dad. You just provoke your children to anger. It's just normal. Because your daddy provoked you to anger. And his daddy provoked him to anger. But you can never express your anger to your parents because you didn't live in America. Now your kids live in America and they could express a little some some. And sometimes you got to remind them that you're a Nigerian. <laughs> uh, somebody told me, and my children are American, but my house is Nigeria. <laughs> I was like, hey man, be careful with that boy. The Bible says, fathers, man, be careful. Don't provoke your children to anger. Love does not provoke. The Bible says love is not provoked. And the Bible tells us that we should actually provoke people to love. So as parents, when we're raising these children, yes, sometimes they test our patience. Oh, not sometimes, maybe every time. They test your patience. Uh, make you want to lose your temper. You've repeated yourself multiple times to them. But don't forget, the scripture is writing, uh, you know, John, John writing to the church. He said, he, ca he called the brethren little children. He wasn't talking to little children. He was talking to grown-ups. And he called us what? Little children. That means that we also have a father who is very patient with us. And he's told us things over and over and over again. That's why a lot of marriages are the way that they are. Because these little children will not listen to their father, who sold them over and over and over again. But he's a patient father. He's a forgiven father. Likewise, we as parents have to be the same way. Forgiving, patient says, don't provoke your children to anger. You know the things that will anger your child. The Bible's letting you know, avoid that. Don't do it. But at the same time, the scripture says, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So, okay, so you're supposed to discipline these children, but don't provoke them to anger. Discipline, as in Bring them in the control, the regulation, the, the direction of the Lord. How can you not provoke your children to anger, but still discipline them? How is that possible? How is it possible to discipline and instruct them, but don't provoke them to anger? The word is love. Love. Love these children that so many people in the world are crying to God to have. You got two of them. Four, five. You got one. There's some people praying to the Lord for a child, and once they get the child, all they do is complain to the Lord about the child. That's it, you just complain, you came to church late, it's your child. You didn't get to sleep, it's your child. You're blaming, you're complaining. There's nothing wrong with expressing ourselves. Because if we couldn't express ourselves, nobody would be talking. But there's a different heart that you speak with when you're complaining about somebody, complaining about something. We ought to love. When I was growing up, some of y'all kids, maybe y'all know. <laughs> maybe the teenagers might know. Listen, when we were growing up, when you get punished, maybe you had to kneel down face the wall or something. I don't know if y'all do a little toe touch. Anybody do a toe touch? Yeah, okay. Or you hold your ears and you be doing squats. Be sitting down. Yeah. When you're done, and when they tell you that you're done, say, what's, your talk. And you're leaving, if you just walk away, uh, you don't love yourself. 
when they're done punishing you, look, everybody's already whispering in. You say thank you. I don't say you better say thank you. But you get your butt up, you start walking to your room. All you hear is, wuss, ah, come here. It's like, what am I? No doubt. It's like, what? what I... You didn't say thank you for the punishment. Nah, man. That would provoke a child to anger, to hatred. Then they want to go off to school as far away from you as possible and never come back. Smile at you. Next time you see them is their wedding day. That's it. Why? Because you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't discipline from a place of love. You disciplined from a place of irritation, anger, bitterness. You had a bad day at work, or maybe there was traffic and you come home. The place is all dirty and filthy, or the plates are in the sink, or some, somebody at church spoke something about your child. He said, hey, Sister Alabaja told me that you didn't want. I, I, look, I was like, wait, 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 wait. Let, let, let the child explain what happened. You don't know if the auntie doesn't like this child. Just let's... Let's explain before the discipline. I had a child and I told the Lord, my first son, I said, Lord, now I'm a father just like you. Teach me your ways, Lord. Let me understand fatherhood from your perspective. One thing I learned from the Lord, before the Lord disciplines, he always sends his word. Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God's wrath is going to come. He's going to discipline, but he just doesn't slap you with discipline and then ask you a question. That's how we were raised. Bah! I said, what happened? He's like, wait. You see? I said, what happened? I'm trying to tell you what happened, but you keep slapping. I can't even remember what happened now. You done slapped it out my head. You slapped me five times. I can't remember what happened now. I'm telling stories. I don't even know where to go. Place of love. Bible says love is what? Patient. Chillax. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. You know, we always compare. When I was growing up, you know, I was like, yeah, why are you jealous of me though, man? <laughs> I know y'all were broke. Y'all ain't had nothing. You had to carry water on your head. But come on, man. Because I just left the shower running. My bad, Pops. It's okay. It's okay, man. Be patient. I had to learn this from my wife. I disciplined my son. He didn't listen to daddy. Daddy sent his word. Daddy sent his word again. Okay, you're not getting the word. After the third time, all right, you need, you need a demonstration of power, okay? <laughs> so I had to discipline him. He had to kneel down face the wall. And I timed it, too, so I'm not too heartless. You'd be cooking. You forget the child has been kneeling down for four hours. He's crying and stuff. He wants to get up. I'm looking at my time like, nope, it's not time yet. But it's paining me that he's in pain. That's disciplining from love. I don't want you to be in pain. It hurts me that you're hurting, but you need this. This is necessary for you. If not, life will be worse. And when he was done, I remember I told him, okay, get up. And my wife was one telling me, oh, hug him. Man, hug him for what? You know what's it? Like, hug him? What am I hugging him for? It didn't make any sense. I said, hug him. I was like, man. I thought I had a, I thought I had a heart of love, but I got to get deeper in love. I had to embrace him and explain to him that daddy doesn't want to do this. But daddy has to do this because daddy loves you. I mean, that whole day just changed my whole mindset. Like, man. And I remember talking to my sister about it. You know, like, yeah, man, when we used to get disciplined, there was no hug. There was no love at the end. You, you get those. If I catch you doing that again, you see. It's like, wow, dad, I love you too. Yeah. <laughs> to some extent, our parents might not have known better. Because the scripture says that obey your parents who are in the Lord. Maybe our parents' parents weren't in the Lord. Maybe they didn't see the love of God and how God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. How God sacrificed himself for us so that he doesn't have to punish us. 
the ultimate punishment, which is separation from him. But yet still, the Bible says that every son that God loves, he's, he disciplines. The Bible says he scourges. It's like, wait a minute. That don't sound loving. But there is a love in discipline. There's discipline in love. You got to make sure when we discipline, there's still love involved. And lastly, the Bible says what? To bring them up in the instruction of the Lord. What is the instruction of the Lord? Little children. The instruction of the Lord, Philippians 2, verse 14. We could all learn from this. Last thing. Philippians 2, verse 14. Um, let's do, if y'all got King James, sorry, I don't know if you could switch it up. Or New King James. Because I think it, it uses the word um, complaining. Disputing. These children might not fully understand dispute. But the Bible says, Philippians 2, verse 14 says, Do all things without grumbling or disputing or complaining. Do how many things? Children, do how many things? Without doing what? Grumbling or complaining. Somebody give me an example of grumbling. What's an example of grumbling? Oh, man. Right? What's an example of complaining? I don't want to do that right now. That, yeah, that's, that's the complaining voice right there. Yeah. The Bible says do all things. So when mommy and daddy tell you to do something, you're supposed to do it without grumbling or complaining. So let's say it together. Do all things without grumbling or complaining. Let's say it. One, two, three. Do all things without. I was with a young person, and the dad told him to do something. And when the dad left, he slammed the fridge. Like, man, I'm stupid, man. I said, hey, 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 my guy. Your dad didn't see you do that, but you know who saw you? God saw you. And God is greater than your father. So that, that attitude, I understand you're just expressing yourself, you're annoyed, you're irritated, but that's not Christ-like. It's not the best thing. Even if mommy and daddy don't see you do it, the Bible tells us to do all things without what? Grumbling and complaining. When I tell my son to do something, he's always like, I say, hey, bro, hey, all that... That's rude, bro. He doesn't understand his rude, so I shouldn't just slap him first and then speak. No, no, no. Needs to explain to him. Or you tell a child to do something like, that doesn't make any sense. I said, hey, hey, hey. Okay. I understand you don't understand what I'm saying, but, but saying that doesn't make any sense can be rude to the person you're talking to. So it's better if you say, oh, I don't understand what you're saying. Or, I, I, I'm not getting it versus saying, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, it's like, oh, okay, yeah. We got to teach them. Give them understanding. Why is that thing wrong? Explain to them if we can. And children, mommy and daddy don't need to explain everything. So don't be like, well, mommy, if you can't explain to me why it's wrong, then, whoa, 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 first of all, don't let me say that you're not an American kid. <laughs> You're not a godless child, all right? Because that's how godless children speak. But you can say, Mommy, can you explain it to me? And if Mommy says, Look, right now I can't explain it to me. I can't explain it to you. Just do what Mommy said. Then we just need to obey. There are many things in the scriptures we don't understand. When Jesus was talking to the disciples, majority of what he was saying was just going over their heads. I mean, he'd been saying he's going to die and get back up. The whole time he's telling them, I'm going to die, I'm going to get back up. Three days, y'all. When he died, they were like, it's over. It's like, bruh, he told you three days. They fully didn't understand. So sometimes we might not understand mommy and daddy, but what must we always do with mommy and daddy? What's the one word? Uh, come on, y'all. What's the one word? Obey. Obey. All right. Lastly, verse 15. Do all things without grumbling and complaining or disputing so that... You will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent children of God above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Listen to this. 
amongst whom you appear as lights in the world. Children, you know, um, we sing that songs about I'm the light of the world or Jesus is the light of the world and we're supposed to shine our light. Let your light shine bright. How do you shine your light? Is it about being the best at what you're doing? Eh, kind of. But the Bible's telling us how we shine light. By doing all things without grumbling and complaining. For adults, this also goes. Because this wasn't written to the children specifically. We ought to do things without what? Grumbling and complaining. Pass the calls for something. Ah, I'll start again. I was like, wait, bro, what, what attitude is that, bro? Pastor is not your judge. The one who is your judge heard what you said. Better yet, the one who is your judge knows your heart. Because maybe you were around brethren, you didn't say anything. But God knows your heart. And when we see that our hearts don't match up to God's standards, what should we do? We should bow our knees in prayer say, Lord, I stumble today. I wasn't patient enough. I wasn't kind to my spouse. Lord, I disciplined my children out of anger. Please forgive me. And any man of God with this mindset will grow. You won't keep falling in the same thing, never. Not if when you fall, you get up and you say, Lord, I've fallen. The Bible says to him who is able to keep you from falling, the Bible tells us to approach the throne of grace so that we may find help when? In the time of need. What do we need help with? Obeying the commandments of the Lord. Everything else man can help you with. You need to get a job? Find somebody else. Network. You need help on an exam? Tutoring. YouTube videos. But what you gonna do about the commandments of the Lord? What are you gonna do about that stony heart of yours? The unforgiven heart. What are you going to do about your outbursts of anger? Your lack of patience. We need the help of the Lord. So let's bow our heads and pray. Ask the Lord to help us. And Lord, you've given me these children. Your word says that you desire a godly offspring. Lord, if my offspring is going to be godly, I have to be godly first. I can't give what I don't have, Lord. Help me, Lord, in the places that I've failed, areas that I've let you down. Please help me not to be satisfied with normal. Please help me not to be satisfied with a low level. I want the best for my children, Lord. I want them to top their class. I want them to be the best at whatever sport they play. And Lord... I know you want the best from me too. Help me, Lord, not to settle for what the world says is okay, even what my neighbors say is okay, even perhaps what church brethren say is okay. Help me, Lord, to reach for what you have put forth as the standard, Lord, to love the way that you love, to discipline the way that you discipline. And lastly, let's pray for our children. As they are in the house of God now, that they will remain in the house forever. There's too many of them leaving and never coming back. Some of that is due to us. We haven't shown them a godly example. Some of that is due to lack of teaching. Let's pray to the Lord that whatever is causing these children that start off in the house of God to depart, Lord, please help us. That these ones, they've started good. Your word says, he who began a good work is faithful to complete it. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you once again. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this time, Lord. We pray as we continue with this uh, program, this week-long program, that we'll continue to hear your word. Father, not just hear your word, but we'll obey your word. Help us, Lord, that your word will go deep in our hearts, that it'll take root, that it'll bear fruit, and Lord, that that fruit will remain. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to take our offering now, and um, uh, it's always an honor to give uh, to the house of the Lord. Y'all are enjoying over here, man. Y'all got a nice little church, a bunch of space. It's like it's Texas in this church. You know, Texas just got random space for no reason. 
Um, so thank God for what you have here and um, all the things that are being done for the children here. And the way that we thank God for it is not just verbally, it's also by what we give. And the Bible says that give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures pressed down, shaken together. Shall men give unto your bosom. Um, let's give unto the Lord with a cheerful heart, thanking him um, for these children, for these young ones. And God looks at our heart when we give, not the amount of what we're given. But if our heart is right, then our giving will be right. So for some people, $100 is no big deal. For some people, that is a huge deal. Some people, $1,000 is nothing. But whatever the Lord lays in your heart, in appreciation of him giving you children, in appreciation of him keeping your children, or in, 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 um, in hopes of what he'll give you, let's give with a cheerful heart. And this church has made it that there's many ways to give. You want to swipe your card, I believe you could do it in the back of the church. Um, and if you want to give online, I believe everything you need to know about giving online will be on the screens. And I believe you guys also have giving uh, offering bows, no? Do y'all pass offering bows? Or y'all get still got, okay, cool. <laughs> so please, let's give to this work and um, God will bless us. Hallelujah. God is faithful.
thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to give. It's a privilege, it's an honor. As the song says that you are too lovely, you're too faithful to leave us. Lord, help us to not just hear those words, but to believe those words. We thank you, Father, as the program continues. Please continue with us. In Jesus' name. Amen.